As you may know, we're currently going for a pandemic. A lot of people are getting COVID-19, or in other words, coronavirus, and it seems to be transferring quite quickly from person to person. It is quite a frightening thing to hear about. Uh, most of the news articles are writing about it. I feel like a lot of people, because of this whole news drama and how much they're trying to perhaps make the public aware, but also inform them of all the frightening situations. I feel like people are starting to think that, you know, this might be the end where everyone will get coronavirus and everything will have to be surely shut down and, and people won't be able to function anymore. So I kind of wanted to find out myself what might happen if we take coronavirus into the future. And the way I want to do that is I want to use my skills of coding and I want to write an algorithm, very simple, uh, that will kind of take and gather the latest data that we currently have. And it's going to populate that data on a, on a map. And I want this process to evolve itself, somewhat like a, like a simulation of what might happen when we go into the future and what coronavirus might look like as it kind of continues to spread and then as it continues to slow down uh, when drastic measures are going to be taken for it to be contained. But I kind of want to put myself to the test of writing an algorithm to see what this kind of result might look like. Now, as we know, uh, when a virus spreads, it kind of starts off as an uh, exponential curve, which means it goes very, very slowly and then it starts to double and double and double and increase. But then what we usually see as more measures are taken by the World Health Organization, which advises people on what precautions to take, and as the government kind of takes its drastic measures to, to stop people contaminating other people with the disease, uh, usually that curve starts to shallow out and become a straight line. So this is the, the basis of my algorithm, and I kind of want to see over the period of the next one, two, three or four months what might happen, which countries might be the most affected, and, and just see visually what it looks like. Because I believe that actually it might not be as bad. If you think about it, China's population is one point, almost four billion, but they managed to contain the virus at only 80,000 cases. So we will dive into that, we'll code it, and we'll see what kind of result we get. Okay, so let's call the coronavirus simulator and prediction of what might happen in a few months. So I'm going to breeze over the code. I'm not going to pay much detail into what exactly I'm doing, but I'll just highlight the relevant steps that I come across. As I was hunting for, uh, for certain data that people already produced, I went on GitHub and I found this uh, CSS EGI SAN data, which is for coronavirus. So it's a repository that holds data created by uh, Johns Hopkins CSSE. And basically as I was starting to check this out, uh, I found that inside the data and inside the Times series uh, reports, they have a free uh, CSV files, which are confirmed, deaths and the people that have recovered. Now, I'm only going to base this on all the confirmed cases because essentially what I want to find out is how many people will be confirmed in the whole population of the world. As we know of coronavirus, about 96 or 97% of people actually recover. Uh, so we won't worry about that. Uh, what I just want to find out is just strictly how many confirmed cases we're going to have. So here we have a data set and it shows us all the countries that we uh, currently uh, have recorded with coronavirus cases. All this data here goes up until the latest day, which is at this moment yesterday's data. Uh, so actually it will be updated quite soon. 
and we're going to try and read the latest data here and put it into our graph uh, that we're going to use. Now, as I went along and started coding this, I realized that the CSV file that we're given doesn't actually provide all the countries. So the countries where there were no declared cases of coronavirus uh, are actually left out. So what I did is I found all the countries in the world. And then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare which countries I have, which I don't, and just add them in, even though they have no confirmed cases, so we can deal with the whole world. Okay guys, so we have officially finished writing the algorithm and I'm sure you guys are all eager to see what's going to happen as I am. I haven't run through it to see the, the result that it gives me, but uh, let's just progress through uh, 120 days and let's see what happens. In three, two, one, go. Damn, that surprisingly worked really well. As we can see where I live, which is the United Kingdom, apparently it's supposed to be around 73,000 cases before it all starts to die out and not progress anywhere from their own. Uh, it looks like most of Western Europe is quite badly affected. What looks like somewhat, uh, I can't say it's accurate, but a logical representation of what might actually happen. Now, as you can see, over 5 million people at this point would have contained the coronavirus, which is the process of, of the next four months. Now, if you think about it, 5 million is not actually that many people. Uh, because, you know, our whole world has over 7 billion people. So, 5 million people, as a comparison, is, is a very small percentage of the whole world. Now, if 96 or 97% of people recover, then actually it's, it's not as bad as the media might predict and portray uh, what might happen in the future. You know, let's just hope and keep our fingers crossed that that is the way. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this. A little code through. I didn't really show, you know, everything to do with the code, um, but uh, just just as a visual representation, this is what kind of output my algorithm gave to me. Now, the one thing I really want to stress in this time period of a pandemic is that if you're an individual who thinks, "Hey, you know, I'll be fine if I get the coronavirus, I'll survive," you know, I, I'm sure you will, and that's great for you. But I'd just like to ask you to. Be aware of the people that are around you and the people that you might come in contact with because those people might be more vulnerable than you and you might put them at bigger risk and this is kind of the the awareness that we have to have throughout this period where we kind of fight with this virus and the countries fight with this virus so please bear that in mind and bear in mind you know the elderly and people that you might be able to help as well uh, just just be open-minded about it and I'm sure everything will come out to a really great result. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I really had fun coding this. Uh, as you can tell, I have socially isolated myself, uh, hence uh, the fact of me having so much time to actually do this. Thank you for checking out this video. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Uh, make sure you put down in the comments what you think, uh, you know, about this whole situation. 
uh, and uh, subscribe if you're new and if you like the channel. But for now, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.